Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome to episode, I think, is number five in uh, this playlist on this Galliano Royale Junkie Arch Top. Now, I built the playlist where you're going to be able to watch this whole thing at the end. It's right up there, popping up there right about now, and it will be at the end of the video as well where it pops up with all the credits but um, if you haven't seen the episodes before stop now and hover your mouse up there until the eye pops up and watch the playlist because we introduce it we tell you uh, a little bit about the brand where it was made um, we ended up taking a deep look at some of the body issues it has we pulled the neck off steamed the neck off, then took the back of the body off so we could fix all the numerous deficits in the body. And now we are going to pull the neck off of this thing. It's not really attached. It's just sitting there clamped on. And we've taken uh, and steamed this thing up and spent uh, a couple days trying to get the back to match up with the body again. And it's pretty close. So um, the weather here has been kind of odd. It's been really hot. It's going to cool down into the highs being in the 50s, but it's been up almost 90, and the humidity is like zero. This is not a good time to unbolt a body and a neck and all that kind of thing, but we'll get through it. Face it, this thing short of the headstock is not much to look at, so let's sit it down and Try not to break anything else. You know what? Let's pull the neck off of here and I'll kind of tell you what we're going to do with um, this thing. So the first thing we need to think about here is we're going to have to put a shim on the neck and we build them like this and taper them and stuff because I do want to get the neck up off of the body of the guitar just a little bit and if we do this and taper this correctly and fit it on like so we can get this neck to pitch down just a little bit and we'll work on this heel here just a tad and we'll bolt it up because we are going to put a heavier and more ornate um, floating bridge on this thing uh, we're going to want to match the paint of this with this and i think i can do that with oak gall ink and you know i'm not one of uh, a big fan of um gold uh packages and gold hardware i mean i i don't think much of an 800 dollar toyota celica with four thousand dollars with the gold trim on it but when you look at this headstock with that gold on there and that art deco stuff this thing just screams put gold on me so that's exactly what we're going to do we got this gaudy gold trapeze tailpiece and, and I know I showed you a a, a wooden rosewood like looking wooden tailpiece that went with this guitar um, in the early 40s when metal was being rationed for World War II, but I, I, I'm going to save this one for a little bit better instrument that comes on. Again, thank you, S. Nathaniel Adams, but what we're going to do in this episode is a couple things. We're going to refret the neck here. These are these skinny little frets and we've done a lot of work down in here we got a couple cracks going on and um, we pulled a fret or two to get uh, the neck steamed off so now we're going to have to uh, do some work here and I want to get new frets on here so you'll see me refret this thing I would like to get it uh, fretted off of the guitar so all the neck work is done before we put this thing back on the guitar so we're not taking a new flex, uh, a, a new neck joint, and flexing it around while it, while the glue is still drying up. You know I'm going to use hide glue just in case this ever has to come off again. And we'll see how it all comes together because while the back is still 
technically loose from the body, once everything lines up and I get everything where it needs to be, then I can come from the inside and drill a hole through uh, the head block and through here and have it exit out up here. And then we can bolt the neck on by putting a T-knot and mounting it so it's threaded on the inside of uh, the guitar on the head block and then everything can screw and unscrew with a bolt instead of using a, a wood screw that's just, just going to bag out after a while. And one of the big things I'm going to do here that's going to be a little bit problematic is I am going to put a set of gold Grover Imperials. These are very expensive. Tuners are very ornate. You would see them on uh, high-end guitars. You would see them on D'Angelico's and the Aquisto guitars, and sometimes you'll see them in import guitars. Um, I did an episode about a fusion blues guitar that had them on it, uh, episode right up there right now. Good guitar, um, was around for a very short period of time. And um, anyway, these are very heavy. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to calculate the weight of some things, the addition of a, br uh, a floating bridge like this, and um, that gold trapeze and we'll weigh all this stuff out and make sure we know what the weight is but this thing is going to neck dive really bad we're going to put a piece of wood on the inside of the guitar so there's a lot to do i'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining it but i'm going to kind of show you in bits and pieces what we're going to have to do to the headstock to accept these bigger tuners of course we're going to um refret the neck and I'll show you a little bit about that. There's going to be um, episodes referenced in there if you want to get deep down into the details of how to do this work with an arbor uh, press to push press frets in and all that. So again, always hover up above there or watch the end of the episode where my email is there. And um, that said, um, the goal here is by the end of this episode to have the neck actually back on the guitar, fully fretted, new tuners, and ready um, for the next part, which is will be to glue the back on and, and do the wiring. I think we're going to do the wiring and stuff and the jack while we've still got the back off. Again, it's not going to hurt anything to sit over there and adjust to itself and have all those cleats and all that stuff we put on it in the last episode heal up together and, and come back. So let's get over to the bench and we're going to start by pulling the frets off and um, see what we can do with this fingerboard and put tuners on. So let's start there, off to the bench. Okay, before we get rolling here, we have the neck off of the guitar, you know that. And we have one of these Mr. Power neck stands rotates this way, does just about anything you want. And then we have a bean bag here, which is just a bag full of beans, that's right. So, the first thing we wanna do is get this neck set up here. Now again, I'm doing this off of the guitar, and there's some things that you've seen before if you've watched my episodes, and there should be a link about doing something with fretting right about there, right about now. I think that's it, or it's over here. One, look for the eye. Either way, I'm still all twisted up about this overhead autopsy camera. So, I've told you we have fret pliers, and what these do is you can see they're curved when they close, so when you pinch this, it pulls up, and then as the frets start coming up, then you use these spacers, one's ten thousandths, one's twenty thousandths, and once they get under here, I'll show you here in a minute. But we're going to pull out these frets. Yeah, that's a task because down in here, um, we pulled the fret, and we are going to put some good, good fret wire on this neck. We're going to do it while it's off the neck. So we're also going to do tuners and some other stuff. But first thing, you've got, I better grab Chick Flick Teal Pointer. You've got Hobo Hot Plate and you've got Granny's Iron. So we're going to put Granny's Iron on there and let it heat up. 
And then we're gonna set Granny's iron on the frets because there's probably some glue down in here and Granny's iron will heat up the glue. If, and only if, this bursts into flame, spontaneous combustion, you have left it on there too long, or if the bone nut starts to stink, yeah, you've got a problem. So, let me get this heated up and we will go from there. All right, I think that that is good. We were going, we can choose to put this back on its stand or back on the hobo hot plate. And how do you tell if it's hot enough? Well, if you take Chick Flick Teal Pointer's finger and, ah, yeah, that's plenty hot. So, remembering that this is hot here, we're going to take our fret pliers and we're just going to do, we're going to get, we're going to rock a little bit here and there. Lewis, I'm going to pull these out. I'm going to swear a lot. You won't want to hear that. Feel free to use your own vocabulary. I'm going to pull these out and revisit you here in a bit. Okay, let's get a little closer. I've got one popped up just a tad, and I've got the ten thousandths shim underneath there. And so as I walk down, and I've got that little bit of leverage underneath, it will come right out. So the thing isn't to tug these things out but more so just squeeze on them until the leverage pops them out. Because if you're tugging them out, you get some breakout. And we just put them in this little bowl here. But if you do get pieces popping off that are significant, take a little piece of tape, put them back where they go. And then once you're done, you're going to glue that back on everything when it's... Um, sanded down and we get all this worked over before we put the new frets in. Okay, we're down to the last one. You really got to take your time with this because this fret board is very fragile. There we go. Now, I have some pretty significant breakout on some of these spots with this one and this one being the worst. So when we peel this back, we can see that there's big pieces coming up. Half the fretboard is coming up. So what do we do with that? Well, there's also another one over here. Let me get a piece of wood on there because once you start moving around the shop here, if you don't mark these off like this, you'll lose them forever. So, a couple things. You can glue them back on with CA glue, super glue. There's different uh, viscosities of it. There's uh, thin, medium, whatever. And you can just put those on and tape them in place. Um, you can also take a, a cutoff from a rosewood fretboard, run it over your belt sander with a little tray underneath the end of it, get your belt sander clean, maybe even put on a new belt and then just grind down some of this and get some powder and put it in a container and then um, you can use this stuff to fill in like some of your steam holes and that kind of thing. Um, finally, if you're down into this area where the, pretty much the whole end of this come off because it was tapered, if I don't want to glue that on, all I have to do is cut, say I want to shorten up the fretboard, I can take a fret saw and just cut through here a thin saw and shorten up the fingerboard it's not going to matter so much on something like this but when we're done we're going to go into this area here where there aren't chips i'm just going to run over run it over with 400 grain paper like this and ideally you would have these these um chips glued in when this is happening but i'm just showing you there's a lot of material coming up here and the difference between this fret wire and this fret wire is significant so you're going to be fortunate to cover up a lot of this chip out right here and then as you've seen me do before once we put the new frets in we are going to um, leak this down into the end 
and through capillary action, it will run down in here and do the new frets. Of course, we're going to put fret markers on here because you know what I'm going to do to hide all of this is I'm going to put matchbooks over it because these painted on frets aren't that significant. Once you're done, you can grab a piece of quadruple aught. That's four zero 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 zero. Uh, steel wool and go over things and if you're concerned at all when you're doing this with frets on sometimes people do it with frets on grab a magnet and just go along with yourself and it will pull up anything that comes up one of these magnets see it's pulling the wool, steel wool up anyway that's about it I'm going to glue these back on let this set for a little bit and then we'll fret this neck Again, I have it off of the guitar because we've got a neck joint to glue up. And if I'm over here beating on stuff and putting tuners on and loosening up that neck joint, I don't want that. So I'll get this fretted, give you a little glimpse of here and there and some commentary. And then we'll put the awesome tuners we have on this beautiful headstock. Oh, last thing. Um, you can see I have this chip of wood right on this piece of uh, binding tape. And so I want to show you here, rather than try and put it on with my finger, I bind it to the tape. Um, and then I just put a little bit of this glue right here. And I've got the nozzle fit where it's going to be fine. It just doesn't glub out all over the place. Yeah, you don't want to get that all over. And then... I can take the tape and pop that right in and that tape will hold down my repair till it's dried. Bingo! Now this one over here is quite a chunk and again I can take this and get rid of anything that's out of there and take my magnet and boom it'll pick all that stuff up. And again, I just take my CA glue here. This stuff is great. Sometimes you'll catch it on sale in packs where you get two bottles for one. But again, now I just flip this up like this. And that tape, having held it in place, gets it right where I need to be. Oh, one last thing. I had the whole uh, end of this fretboard chip off. I'm not sure if it's going to hold, but I had to glue four pieces back together and I need to make sure that it fits in the, the that a, a fret will fit into that slot and if I don't when I put the fret wire in, it's going to pop it off again any way. So while the glue is um, trying to dry up before it sets, I can take one of these frets that I have and just go along and drop this in here like so, and get my spacing right rather than have it jammed up there and a little bit hanging off here. Likely, I'm going to lose this. If I do, it's no big deal. I can cut it right here, and this will be my last fret. Now it's just waiting for glue to dry, which we are famous for. We've got to change the plans here. Our fretboard is literally coming undone bad seamstress blues do you know that song i'll have to give you a link to it right up there right about now anyway we started putting uh ca glue on the chip outs and now this thing is confused as to what's the original wood and what's not so we are going to pull this fingerboard or fretboard off of the neck because increasingly the only redeeming thing about <laughs> this guitar is the uh, headstock graphic and hopefully this will hold together with what i am got planned for it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this heat up, heated up little knife that you've seen before we use it to pull off kerfing. It comes in handy. We're going to take this hook blade and we're going to score the nut. And then 
we are going to basically take this and steam off or melt the glue on the nut. There we go. Okay. We're going to put this where we know where it is. Now, we've pulled all the frets back off. We barely got those started. And so, we don't really want to put the iron that I've already got heated up over here directly over the wood and light it up. But basically, what we're going to have to do is pull the fretboard off without damaging the neck. And you can see that there's a line there. And as we go down, we're going to score when things start cutting loose. It's my experience that if you don't pay attention to what's going on here, it's real easy to start getting a split running. And the next thing you know, half the neck is gone. So we're going to be very careful with this. We're going to start up on the nut end and we're going to heat up everything and try to cut the glue loose just like we did with the neck. Again, we're not going to put the, I want to make sure that our iron stays hot, the iron directly on the wood, but we're going to use this double-sided metal ruler. And we're just going to set the iron that's been on the hot plate up there right on there for about 10 minutes and then we're going to start popping things loose with this once that glue heats up do some scoring as necessary on the sides uh, and just use a number of pallet knives and finally um, a, a putty knife you do not repeat do not want to start coming in here with a hammer and a chisel and cutting this loose. That's how you start getting those cracks. So, so jumping in here for a second, um, you can see that it's pretty easy to tell that the this blade turns blue as hot as it gets. And we've got the iron sitting on here. So we heated this up, we keep moving the iron down a little bit and then we take this really hot blade and we're just going in. This is going to take a while um, it's nothing you want to hurry about because if you cut this loose and crack it, as soon as you hear cracking, there's going to be a problem. So, it's just a matter of being patient. What you do need to think about is considering what this guitar is worth and the man hours that we're starting to get into it now. Yeah. This is not a $20,000 guitar. So, but it's a good place to learn the kind of stuff that you might need to work on a $20,000 guitar later. As this all heats up, it will get better as it goes. So it's just simply keeping the force and pressure right and not excessive. Again, I might be tempted to take a hammer and just beat on this. That is not what I want to do. That is for sure. If something on the neck cuts loose underneath, I will be very unhappy with that. The last thing I want to do is get out the scarf joint jig and cut this off and glue it onto something else. I hope I didn't just jinx myself. Okay, about 10 minutes into the iron sitting on top of the fingerboard, we're starting to get some breakthrough here. And I want to point out that as you're working with especially something like this steel putty knife, that you take some care to get it down in and then mark by rocking back and forth where the fretboard is going to cut loose as you walk down the process here. Because if you don't do that, what ends up happening is, again, you get some cracking going on here. And the next thing you know, your whole neck cuts loose. But you can see here that we are coming through here. I don't want to touch this because it's very hot. But I'm onto this bean bag now. And again, lay the knife down as you go, as you walk down and score and define 
where the edge of the fingerboard meets up with the neck. Okay, so we've flipped this over now to make sure that the other side isn't splitting out. I've got this little tab that I use when I'm separating a body from uh, the kerfing, a part of the body, the back or the front, and I can just put that in there to give myself some room. And then as we go down, again, we're just rocking this back and forth, and we're making sure that we define the cut line as we walk down with the edge of the knife. If you don't do that, it's going to break out on you, guaranteed. There we go. Don't be afraid to keep that knife hot. All right, there we go. Ooh, clean one owner. Uh, I would say that the best part about this was heating it up with the iron, heating the whole fingerboard up with the iron. We've got one little spot right here that was a little bit stubborn uh, that we are going to have to work over, but I'm going to go ahead and make another fingerboard for this. We may end up changing the scale just a tad over what the guitar was. Um, originally, we've got the original knot. That worked out. And um, we're going to do some work to get this nice and flat, get a new um, fretboard in here, and figure out what our intonation is going to be where it lays out on the top of the guitar. But I'm pretty pleased with this now. I will get a fretboard on here and show you the basics of that. All right, there we go. Sanded down nice and flat, ready for glue for the new fretboard. All right, guys, catching up. Good news. Look what came in the mail. Now, I've done a little work on it already, so let's figure this out. I want to pose a question to you. You've seen in this episode that this fingerboard um, come apart on me and it, it just was not going to be dependable for the future. And we have put a um, t pulled the knot off so we know that this fingerboard or fretboard, whatever you want to call it, amounts to there and it extends beyond the uh, neck joint where it attached to the body about to here. So, let's think about a couple of situations that this could address. Um, what if you had a guitar that the neck was twisted, uh, not so much in the pocket here, uh, but the neck warped over years and kind of was ringing like a dish rag, you know what I'm talking about? And so that would mean that this part of the fingerboard, or the neck, excuse me, would be low and this one would be high. So what do you do? Well, the first thing you would do is you would shake can well. Yeah, I got a surprise for you. I don't do this stuff randomly. Um, there's a guitar on the way that I'm going to really enjoy working on. I've tried to get my hands on it for 10 years or more, and it's finally coming out here, so at least I'll get to work on it. But... So let's say you have this neck is twisted and warped to the point where it's popping frets out of the fretboard. That's pretty bad. So you would simply pull this, uh, steam this off, heat it off like we did earlier in the episode. And then you could take a piece of uh, straight edge and put some of this 400 grit uh, adhesive back lined adhesive on it and just go back and forth. You could take a pencil or a piece of graphite and go over this and it would kind of tell you, it's kind of like mounting a, a bridge, a floating bridge on the top. It, you mount um, sandpaper on it and go back and forth until the bridge starts to e give an even line of dust and that way you know it's fit, especially on those arch tops that have waves in them and have gotten old like me. Anyway, 
So what are we going to do here? Well, uh, first thing we want to do is find the center of the fingerboard as well as the neck. You also want to make sure that your fret slots, <laughs> they get closer together as they get towards the body. Um, but you're basically moving the light out of the way real quick here. And you would lay this on here and find the center and do the same thing here and figure out how this one is going to line up with the way this one did. So this one ends here. You would basically cut it off right here. I don't know that we need to do that just yet, but then what we would do is we'd take two-sided tape and put a piece here and here and here or here and here and here or here, here, here and here or here and here. And you math majors can fig figure out the infinitesimal trig trigonometriness that would be the combinations, then you tell me what to bet on in Vegas, right? So, double-sided tape, then you lay this on here, and you flip it over, and you see how wide it needs to be, and then you go, wait a minute, I don't need to do that because I have the old fingerboard, and I can just center these up, like this, flip this over, because the frets are down here, I mean they'd be down here. And you put the two-sided tape on this instead of the lame idea to put it here. Do you like how you just waste your life with these tricks? Anyway, you can see how that is, a little bit sticking out here and there. With the double-sided tape, you can go to the bandsaw, and instead of trying to freehand a line here, you can use this as a guide and run the blade of the bandsaw right to this and get a nice even cut where everything is exactly as it was here on here. Okay, guys, here we are. Um, remember, we had this fretboard tore up from the floor up. We removed it off here. That went well. We've done a little bit of sanding here. Um, we've used uh, a piece of oak with 400 grit sandpaper and went at it all different angles and then put a straight edge on it to see if it was going to bounce all over anywhere. And it didn't. So we're good there. And now it's time to take a look at how using this old fretboard on the new one turned out. It couldn't have turned out any better. I couldn't be happier. We just put the double-sided tape on it, stuck it down, and then ran it through the belt sander, I mean the uh, bandsaw, and just, just outside of the edge here, and it cut everything down, and then took it to the belt sander. If you use the belt sander, the bottom rounded edge of it, you can catch what's going on here like that airplane flying over I swear my competitors will do anything to ruin my content anyway you just run this down the belt sander eye in it and then lay it on this way and this way and every way and the next thing you know this is done now let's glue this on here after we remove the old one remember we're going to use a shim like this on the neck here to tilt the whole neck this way just a little bit by bringing this side up but I'm thinking do I really really want to fret this once this is glued on here and the answer is no this is a great great spot to end this episode and we'll carry on into the next one and I already have everything set up, so the opening should be relatively short. Hey guys, this is a good place to stop this episode. I really thought that at the end of this episode, we would be looking at the fretboard on, the fretboard, the frets in, the tuners on. I really thought that. I also think the Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, and the Tooth Fairy are going to be home at my house each night when I come home, too. So I tend to be 
altruistically something or other and everything I do is spontaneously orchestrated so I meant to do this anyway let's stop it here we'll break this up when we put the new fingerboard on fret it and get some tuners on this thing and I'll tell you what the takeaway is this the takeaway is this when you buy one of these guitars that's 60, 80, 90 some years old and you pay two or three hundred dollars for it and it looks good, far better than this one looked, please don't buy anything like this. Leave them for me. But you can tell it's really, really easy to get some money into them. And if you take them to a luthier, and you think they're going to do stuff for free. If you look at the number of hours we got into this guitar, the price of it is astronomical. Anyway, we'll catch up in the next couple episodes and get this thing ready to rock and roll. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.